Yeah, thank you very much, Mary. And I suppose thanks uh, to Tony as well. I suppose for the recognition of, of the work um, that ECO UNESCO has done, um, we have been involved in the sphere, I suppose, of education for sustainable development. Um, I know that back at the start of the decade in 2005, um, we very much pushed the um, need for a national strategy in education for sustainable development. We were very involved with a number of different organisations at, at that stage. Um, and I suppose for us, having something like the international UNESCO um, backed UN Decade of Education for Sustainable Development was actually very important and it was a very important lever. Um, and and um, I suppose for us as a, an NGO to try to put a little bit of pressure, and I'm sure the departments won't mind that pressure being put on them, um, but it is very important. So these international, I suppose, days and international years. Years, um, and, and, and these decades are actually very, very important. Um, I think it's really, I suppose, for, from um, our perspective, and I'm just going to talk to you a little bit about the work that ECO UNESCO does. Um, I'll talk to you a little bit about ESD, Education for Sustainable Development, and DE, and a little bit like Tony, it is looking at some of those comparisons that are there um, with ESD and DE. And I think, Mary, yes, uh, you know, in some ways, um, they are very, they're very, very similar. There's such um, an overlap. I suppose from the ESD perspective, we do, uh, I suppose, sometimes look um, DE wouldn't traditionally have had maybe um, looked at environmental um, issues. I wouldn't have considered environmental issues. And I think that's somewhere that ESD, but now it is. And I, now I think now, now it's moving forward. Um, so I'm going to also talk um, about some of our programs and some of the initiatives that we've been running um, over the past number of years. Um, and I suppose what we would see has been quite successful initiatives um, over, over that time and how we have worked with young people. And, and I know we have a lot of our young people actually here today um, from uh, one of our programs, which is the Youth for Sustainable Development Global Youth Leaders for Change program. Um, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about that as well. Um, and I know I've only 10 minutes and I've also got a film to show at the end. Um, so I'll be fast. Um, so we're an environmental education youth organisation. We were established in 1986. I think it's always really important to note that um, when we were established as an organisation, we were actually set up by a group of young people. Um, it was a group of, of um, 17, 18, 19 year olds who um, came together. They were very interested in environmental conservation and, and protection at the time. Um, and within two years of setting up, they affiliated themselves to UNESCO. Um, and I suppose they wanted to bring that global perspective to the work, and that's what UNESCO does. So they were looking at the env practical environmental conservation um, work, but bringing um, a much more of a global perspective to the work, which made us quite unique as an organisation at that time. Um, we would have been working very much um, on, um, I suppose, the, the personal development of young people, um, as well as those kind of bigger issues of education for sustainable development and um, environmental education. So we are um, a part of the UNESCO clubs movement. Um, we're in, uh, um, a UNESCO club. We're affiliated to the World Federation of UNESCO Club Centres and Associations. This is a global network that um, it supports and it promotes um, the ideals of, of UNESCO um, around the world. And our main target group are, are 12 to 18 year olds. So we mainly work with teenagers. Um, that's the target group, but we do some work with older and, and, and younger young people um, as well. Um, so some of the programs that we run, um, we have, um, and, and I'm going to run through these because I'm going to focus on some of them um, later on, um, a Young Environmentalist Awards program, we run um, peer education programs, um, we have a, a network of equine ESCO clubs, we run environmental workshops and, and children's camps, um, we're also a FETAC accredited training centre, um, and we have um, an Eco Sustainability Award as well, and I'll tell you a little bit more about that, and we also develop educational publications. So very importantly for us, I suppose our youth programs are really the core of what we do. Um, and um, we're always um, trying to work on um, empowering um, young people. We want them, um, I suppose, to um, develop the knowledge, the awareness, to develop skills. And then also a lot of the work you'll see with the how we do it is very much learning by doing. It's very much based on an action project, very much obviously the youth work approach to, to, to what we do. Experiential learning is very important for us and obviously the youth empowerment and participation. Um, we use ESD and DE in our work, um, and so what is it? Um, well, a bit like what Tony was saying, you, you had the, the other definitions there. Um, one definition is that it's a vision of education that seeks to empower people of all ages to assume responsibility for creating a sustainable future for all. Um, it very much takes a very big planetary picture approach, I suppose, when you think about education for sustainable development. It takes it from that kind of very much that global perspective. 
Um, UNESCO would see education for sustainable development as not being a particular program or project, but rather an umbrella for many other forms of education that already exist and new ones that remain to be created. Um, and then um, a, a lot of work has been done by... Um, so, um, Professor Daniela Tilbury um, in the University of Gloucestershire um, and um, she would say that ESD includes um, I suppose a number of different methodologies and um, you have envisioning, envisioning is really really important in ESD it's about imagining a better future um, critical thinking and reflection um, is hugely important a hugely important um, skill so why something happens um, looking at systems thinking where, the, where are the connections between everything? Um, looking at building partnerships um, and promoting dialogue and then participation in de decision making. And also that, that um, I suppose, all of this is based uh, um, and, and it's values driven. Um, why is ESDD important? Well, obviously, um, you'd be all aware of unsustainable development and global trends since the 1950s. Um, between 1970 and 1997, the global consumption of energy has increased by 84%, and most of that 84% is coming from the consumption of fossil fuels, and most of that consumption of fossil fuels is producing emissions, and it's producing carbon dioxide emissions, and of course that in turn is leading to the warming up of the planet, and so we have things like climate change happening, and on top of that then you've got um, global biodiversity that's in decline as well, and there's a lot of other knock-on effects um, for, for that. And of course... Then when you look at the world, um, this is just taken from, many of you have seen this, globalmapper.org. Map, um, it just, it's just, a, a, I suppose, a, an image showing that less than 20% of the world's population use 80% of the world's resources. So the, the, the top part, the global north, using uh, most of the world's resources. And then, of course, more than 1 billion people, 1 in 5 of the world's population living in extreme poverty um, as well. Um, and of course, on top of all of that, we're living on a finite and delicate planet. Um, and you're looking at something like sustainable development, where you have the planet being the life support system for all of us. And that's everybody on, on this planet. And that a healthy environment provides the foundation um, for all life. But also, look, I suppose, within that, you've got that the economy depending on the society and depending on this flourishing environment as well. And you need, I mean, it, it, it shows there that, that your economy, it, you need a vibrant and equitable society. Um, and that's what's important. Um, so why is it important for young people and why are young people important to ESD and DE? So there's two things. Looking at, for young people, um, ESD and DE, it builds the knowledge of these global issues and it looks at interrelationships and interdependencies and interconnectedness. We always like to use the web of life. We use a lot of web of life activities um, in, in the work that we do. Um, and it's shown really connections that are there. Um, it explores values and perceptions um, and it helps um, build understanding of the influences that shape those values. It's very empower it's, it empowers young people to be agents of change. It develops systems and critical thinking, and it promotes futures thinking. Um, and then for ESD and for DE, um, we would see that young people are key players, and um, that you, as young people, you need to be involved, you need to be consulted with, you need to be listened to, and you need to be listened to not just because you're, you're the future, but because you're here and now and because you've got a voice and because you've got something to say um, and because we should be listening. Um, we think as well that you bring a new perspective. You have new and creative and innovative ideas and you want to be listened to. And that you can make change happen through your own networks. You've got peer networks, you've got youth group networks, schools um, and, and more. Um, so how is ES, ESD and DE linked? And again, it's kind of just following on from what Tony was saying. Um, both DE and ESD are concerned about the what and the how. Um, they're, they're, um, so I suppose it's not just what you learn or, or, or um, such as the subject areas, but it's also about the methodologies that are used. Um, it enables um, knowledge, skills and attitudes that allow learners to engage critically. So we've talked about this. It's uh, based on a vision of education that's active, participatory, interdisciplinary, and it promotes action for positive personal and social change. That's really important. Um, and, and, of course, some of the issues, and, and Tony has uh, outlined some of those already, some very, you know, obviously um, common issues, climate change, disaster risk reduction, global justice, poverty reduction, biodiversity, sustainable ethical consumption, uh, gender equity, and more of those um, as well. Um, so in terms of the programmes that we run, um, we've, uh, as, as I suppose I've said, that we have um, been working in the whole field of education for sustainable development for years, um, we have um, historically um, I suppose, been doing a lot of work in the development, in what we would have called more, I suppose, the development education and the global side of things since 2002. We'd have very much been involved in, in things like, um, I suppose, annual events such as uh, food fests, global day events, um, One World Week, um, developing resources like a global trees pack. Um, so all of this was for us. We would have 
called our development education at the very start, probably more like global education, excuse me, and the global education work. Um, within the work that we're currently doing, um, we have an, what we call it, we have an ESD checklist for all of our programs. So we benchmark mark all of our programs against ESD and DE, and we do this on an annual basis. Um, we have a number of different programs um, that we're running, the Youth for Sustainable Development Program, which has been funded by Irish Aid, the Young Environmentalist Awards, Eco Sustainability Award. Um, I'm just going to talk about those. The Learning to Change Our World, ESD and DE Schools Program is, is a new, actually, initiative, and it's been funded by Worldwide Global Schools. And we're... Um, um, and I have one minute, I better hurry up. And we've got a, um, a UE, University Educators for Sustainable Development, which is a very interesting project that we're working on. Um, it's a, a European project, 55 partners um, from all over Europe, looking at the professional development um, competencies um, of um, university educators in the whole area of education for sustainable development. So we've already done a mapping exercise of third level uh, universities um, and third level colleges. Um, and then also we have accredited training in ESD and DE. So I'm just going to hurry on through this. Um, one of our programs are Young Environmentalist Awards. Um, this is um, an All-Ireland um, program recognising and rewarding the work that young people do in um, I suppose raising awareness on, of, their of their environment and also of issues related to sustainable development. It's all based on this idea of local environmental action projects and um, we would get over 200 projects annually with um, 4,000 young people participating and, and young people who do projects on a variety of different issues such as climate change, water, sustainable development and as I said all the awards have to have a local and global criteria and then we've also uh, developed a special local to global award. So I suppose recognising the importance of looking at that local thinking globally and, and, and really acting locally. Um, a second of our program, and this is, um, so has been a very successful program for us and it's been funded from Irish Aid since 2007, is Youth for Sustainable Development as Global Youth Leaders for Change program. And newly, we have over 80 young people um, on the program. They learn from each other, and then they, um, it engages young people on ESD and DE issues and, and where they relate to their peers. We have workshop sessions. They do action projects, facilitation process, and they do accredited training. And we have a number of our young people who are trained up peer um, educators and are facilitators, and they work as leaders with other young people as well. And this has been a really, um, really um, successful project, really in terms of the amount, I suppose, of, of development, personal development, the uh, level of knowledge knowledge and awareness that's been developed and the ability then of the young people to um, carry out, um, I suppose, action projects on the ground as well. These are some of the, um, these are all photographs from that program. Um, some of the, I suppose, activities we do, um, we'd have, obviously, ESD, uh, we'd have workshops, we use outdoor field trips, we have international visits and exchanges, we do international days as well, and we get involved very much with One World Week um, and with things like um, Barefield Theatre Company and Black History Month. And just some of the things that young people have said, I don't buy as much many things anymore, which is a good thing. Of course, you're looking at consumption patterns and um, impact. I've become more interested in issues related to development and sustainability and have a greater want to take action. Um, this is just um, another initiative, um, which is the Eco Sustainability Award, and it's the, looking at the whole organisation approach. Um, and that really is working with, trying to work with youth organisations um, to encourage them to take that whole organisation approach to sustainability um, into the, in the work that they do. Um, and we also have accredited trainings um, as well. And I suppose then, you know, I think Tony has mentioned this in terms of nationally. I think the important thing that I'd just like to highlight is the, the need for, I think, the department, different departments to come together to ensure that the national strategy on ESD is implemented and that commitments are reached, but really also to do it in partnership with the relevant sectors. Um, you know, we have obviously the youth sector, um, and to highlight that, the importance of, of, of the youth sector that's there. Um, Tony has highlighted all of, those other, all of those areas. The last one is the Global Action Plan. I suppose... It, um, UNESCO have highlighted this post-UN decade of ESD, the, the importance of empowering young people to be agents um, of change. Um, and I just want to show you, if that's okay, please, Mary. Please, Mary. Yeah, but could I, it's just a film on the, uh, it's, I think it's a two-minute film from our peer educators, and they've been linking in, they've they linked in with, um, I suppose it's a competition they won with concern. Okay, it's there. The answer to this question is yes. So why is there 925 million people suffering from hunger and malnutrition around the world? And why is hunger number one on the list of the world's top ten health risks? Food security is when all people at all times have access to sufficient, safe and nutritious food to maintain a healthy and active life. The problem starts with this, so let's get down to the roots. Climate change is one of the roots. Burning fossil fuels and deforestation.
deforestation contributes to, to climate change, leading to sporadic weather conditions, making it impossible for farmers to predict when to grow, cultivate, and harvest crops, making the availability of food hard to predict. The utilization of non renewable oil as the main energy source to run machinery, produce food, and transport food is another reason. The availability of oil decreases every day, driving up the cost of producing food. The use of land is a critical issue. In many countries, governments sold small farms to large scale corporations and left the small farmer without a livelihood. A lot of these corporations produce monocrops, which reduce the fertility of the land in the long term. The meat production industry requires a massive quantity of land and has a strong environmental impact. The waste of animals contributes to one fifth of all the world's greenhouse gases. Grain is being used as animal food, depriving many people of a main food source. There are many more reasons to explain food insecurity. We will stop here and have a look at what happens to the people who have to suffer from our unfair food system. People will do anything for food. But what exactly is anything? Well, it starts with little stages of anxiety. People begin to worry where they're going to get their food. That's when the money problems begin. People begin to sell items fundamental to their livelihood just to get food. It doesn't stop here, though. Take Serena, for, for example. She has to walk through mine fields just to get food. It's sad how this gets even worse when some families even result to doing un- undescribable things. But we can change this. How? I'll tell you how. First, grow your own food as much as possible. Use a corner of a balcony, a few metres of a garden, or even a few plant pots on your windowsill. This will absorb carbon emissions, reducing climate change. Also, think about what you're eating. For example, try to buy as much fair trade as possible. Try to consume less meat. Now, you don't need meat every day. Take a look at your way of life. Why not cycle or use public transport? Look at where your purchase is coming from. Finally, be an involved citizen. Find a way with your community to put pressure on the government to protect small scale farmers. Lobby for policies to limit the use of biofuels. Why not develop renewable energy instead? There is so much more that you could do to buy food insecurity all over the world. But for today, just start somewhere. Thank you. Okay, thanks.